Welcome to part 2 of the Spherical Mask Shader Tutorial by Peerplay. In the previous part we've looked at the math behind the shader and set the output color to grayscale. If at any point you get confused with the math, check the first part again until you internalize how the system works. Shaders can be a bit dazzling for people, especially as the syntax is different from C Sharp. Often it happens that your shader stops working without you knowing what you did wrong. So first of all we see here some warnings. A comma expression used where a vector constructor may have been unintended. So even though we've just changed a couple of lines we've already got a warning on line 40. And the warning comes from the fact that there is a space between the grayscale and the comma. And the shader code doesn't really like that. So if I remove this and I remove this space here and if I'll save this shader and I'll go back then the warnings disappear. But shaders are very powerful and it will allow you to create amazing looking games. As the shader talks to the GPU instead of the CPU, it can handle calculations very fast. But even though today's graphics cards are very powerful, it is still a good habit to optimize your shaders. So let's have a look at the code I've written so far. At line 39 I declared a float value called grayscale. But instead of using a float we can also use a half. And this will optimize the code because a half is half of the length of a float. So we'll change this to a half. Now here I've divided by 3. But dividing is slower than a multiplication. So we can change this to multiplication. And instead of using the 3 we can say multiply by 0 0.333. And we get the same result but it's faster and more optimized. And apparently the warnings that we've seen earlier weren't about the spaces, but it's because I should say this is a fixed 3. And that should fix the problem. Now let's start by writing out our spherical mask shader. Now let's scroll to the top and we will add some properties that we need in our shader. And the first thing we need is our position in world space that we are going to send to the shader through C sharp. And we'll call this position. And we have to open this and we'll give it a name so we can see in the editor the name that we've called it. And let's just call this position or let's call it real position. Now the real position is a vector and we're going to have to declare what it's going to be by default. So we'll say 0000, zero, zero, zero. and the next thing we need is a radius and a softness. So we'll type here radius. And we need to give this a name as well, so I'll call this Sphere Radius. And I'll make this a range, because I don't want to have the radius go below zero. So I'll set the range from zero to, let's say, 100. And it's going to be by default zero. And the next thing we need is the softness. We'll call this Sphere Softness. Let's make this a range as well, between zero and 100. And it's going to be by default zero as well. Now with these properties in place we can save the script and check it out in Unity. And you'll see that the values are added and you can change the values in here. Now you'll notice that the world position is a factor 4 and we only need an X, Y and a C. But a shader language does not have a factor 3. This does not really matter because we can just leave the W value at what it is. Now at this point the properties have no effect on the shader at all. The properties are part of shader lab and if we are going to write in the shader we have to get these different values into the CG program. So you'll notice here that for example the color has been declared here as a fix for color. So the same thing we will do to the position, radius and softness. Now here we will add the position and it is a factor so it's either in shader language a fixed for, a half for or a float for. And as this is a real position and needs to be very specific, we'll create a float for and we'll call this position. And we have to set a semicolon here inside the CG. And you'll notice that inside the CG we do need to use a semicolon. Now for the next ones we've got the radius and the softness and these will both be halves. So we'll say half radius and we'll create a half softness. 
Now we can use these properties in our calculations. So scroll down to the void surface input output. And in here I'm going to clean up this a little bit. So let's put an enter here. Uh, this is about the grayscale, so let's call this a grayscale. And this is about the color. Now the first thing we need to do is to create a distance check between the position that we've put into the shader and the shader position in real space. So let's create here a half and we'll call this D for distance and it's going to be distance between two factor threes and the first one is going to be the position and the second one we need is the in dot real pass but we haven't got the in dot real pass in our shader yet if you look at the fix for C you can see here the in dot UV main text and if you scroll up to the input struct you can see that it's requesting here the uv.maintex. So we have to add here the real pass. And we can do this by writing a float3 and we'll call this real pass. And you have to write real pass with a capital P. That's just how it works in the shader. So now with this in place, we can go back to our distance check and we can type here in the real pass. Now we're ready to create the sum of our calculations. So I'll create a new half and I'll call it sum. And it's going to be D, distance. And as I explained in the animation of the first part, it's the distance minus the radius. And we're going to place this between parentheses because we're going to divide the result of this by the minus of the softness. And we'll put this inside another parentheses because the entire value of this we want to saturate so we'll type here saturate and we'll close off with a semicolon so now the outcome of this value will always be between 0 and 1 now the result of sum we want to place inside a lerp because we want to lerp from grayscale to color and as we will output a color we can use a fixed for and we'll call this lerp color and it's going to be a lerp between the grayscale and the color with the sum as the amount so first we need the grayscale but the grayscale is a fixed 3 and we need to have a fixed 4 so we're going to cast this to a fixed 4 so let's write a fixed 4 open parentheses close parentheses and then we're going to type here the c underscore g and we'll put a comma here and we'll place in 1 for the alpha now, outside of the parentheses, we'll type here to where we want to lerp, and that is going to be C for the color, with the amount of sum. Close with a semicolon, and the only thing we need to do is change the albedo from its C underscore G to the lerp color dot RGB. So let's type in here lerp color dot RGB. Now let's save the shader and go back to Unity. Now the shader is already working, but the only reason we don't see any result is because all the values are set to zero. So let's change that. Set the sphere radius to two. And now we've got our spherical mask shader. Now we can set the softness to 0.5 for example, and we can change the world position in its X, C, or its Y position. So that's it for this part. In the next part we will add a mission to the shader and create a script in C-sharp that will change the shader position in the update function. If you want to support me in making these tutorials available for everyone, become a patron on my Patreon and you get access to all of the source files of my tutorials. If you like this tutorial please hit the thumbs up and if you want to stay updated with new tutorials subscribe to the channel.